U.S. City volunteers distribute aid and cash cards to residents affected by a gas explosion in Ewing, New Jersey. We learn more about Taiwan's National Science and Technology Center for Disaster Reduction and how it helps us prepare for natural disasters. Welcome to Dial Headlines. I'm Helen Nell. Thank you for joining us. In the United States, a gas explosion occurred earlier this month in Ewing, New Jersey, affecting the lives of some 55 families. Besides carrying out a survey the date after the explosion, city volunteers returned on March 15 and held an aid distribution to hand out cash cards, blankets, and other necessities to the survivors. <laughs> Though this is not their first aid distribution, New Jersey City volunteers ensure all the prep work is complete well in advance of the arrival of the families. When the residents arrive, you can first greet them to see how they are doing and lead them to their seats. Taking the needs of these disaster survivors into consideration, the TG Foundation not only handed out cash cards, but also blankets and scarves. We will also be handing out bamboo coin banks, scarves and blankets. These are the items we plan to give to them today, besides the cash cards. Because it is March and this year has been quite cold, so we felt that these items would come in handy. All this is made out of plastic bottles. One volunteer sees the opportunity to introduce Tiji's philosophy to the mayor of Yuwing City. Among the survivors, Tara's house was completely destroyed by the explosion and is grateful for the help she has received so far. You know, American Red Cross has been great and we just learned of your organization and we're so grateful. So everything has just been, the community has just been really helpful. So the clothing donations, food and the gift cards is going to help us get things started back on track. So it's going to be a long road. We're not worried about the amount, you know, we're, we're grateful that we're receiving anything because no one has to do this, you know, so we're, we just count our blessings and remain grateful. And Since the tragic event, many families have temporarily relocated and thus on the day of the distribution, only 23 households showed up to receive their cash cards. However, city volunteers will continue to accompany all the affected families on the path to recovery. Moving to Taiwan in Banqiao Avenue, Taipei City, a fire broke out on March 11th, leaving the house owner Mr. Yang dead and the house severely damaged. To help Mr. Yang's parents and daughter, city volunteers mobilized to clean up their home in hopes of helping them get back on their feet as soon as possible. Five days after the fire, the Yang family returns home to clean up their house with the assistance of city volunteers. We are really thankful for city volunteers' help today. Some 80 volunteers are here to help. It's very rare. Moving piles of debris and garbage into bags, city volunteers speed up their cleaning progress, hoping to help the young family return their home to normal as quickly as possible. It's great to have city volunteers around. You are always there to help our community members. We had a tight schedule over this month. We didn't have much time to help them. Thankfully, we are able to come here today to help them clean up and offer them emotional support. Thanks to city volunteers, the young family will soon return their lives to normal. In our next report, we'll meet city volunteer Li Wenjie, who immediately flew to Beijing, China, following news of the missing Malaysia flight to provide comfort and support to family members. But first, let's go to Malaysia, where city volunteers have arrived at the hotel family members are staying to accompany them through this difficult time. This is where family members of those on board the missing Malaysia Airlines flight are currently staying. The hotel is off limits to the public. Only four to six city volunteers are allowed access. Although some family members insist are having city volunteers by their side, the volunteers have to be extra careful with their choice of words. At first, we were afraid to say good day because it is not suitable to say so. We decided to say good morning, good afternoon, and good night. However, as other family members don't want to be disturbed, volunteers can only wait in the hotel's garden. If we sit down, those in need of our comfort and support may not see us. 
all of them have to pass through the aisle over here. That's why we decided to stand here and wait for them. For the first day, we stood for about five hours because we didn't know when they would show up. Other than soreness in their legs, volunteers also have to deal with the city's smog. We provided family members with surgical masks, but they didn't use them. That's why we are not using them either, because we are afraid that they will think of us as impolite. Touched by the volunteers' gestures, some family members have slowly opened up. A family member asked me how much do I get paid by coming here. I told them they are not alone, and we are here to support them whenever they need us. To soothe family members' anxious hearts, volunteers have prepared some herbal tea. The smog problem is very bad right now, so we decided to prepare some herbal tea, and hopefully we'll be able to have a conversation with these family members. Following the news of the missing flight, city volunteer Li Wenjie and others traveled to Beijing to assist. It is a good chance for us to learn not only how to conduct visitations, but also how to deal with situations like this. Six years ago, after meeting Tsi Li Wenjie decided to become a full-time volunteer and is often seen on the front lines of Tsi's international missions. Facing a lack of sleep over the past 10 days, Li Wenjit had to seek medical treatment. However, he continues to put his pain aside to focus on helping the family members. I've only had about three to four hours of sleep per day. I don't mind as it is my duty to help these family members. As the search for the missing Malaysian flight continues, city volunteers promise to continue to accompany family members in the days and weeks ahead. The Guanshan City Hospital in Taiwan was completed in year 2000 and has been safeguarding the health of residents in the surrounding area for 14 years, besides offering a 24-hour emergency room and Western medicine. In August of 2011, a traditional Chinese medicine department was established. Before, when I didn't use a cane, I would fall, but now after acupuncture, I can walk fine on my own. The senior's left leg has a steel reinforcement. She didn't believe me when I said that acupuncture can soften the stiffness in her leg. Originally skeptical of traditional Chinese medicine, after experiencing the benefits herself, 78-year-old senior Shi is now a believer. Actually, traditional Chinese medicine can cure lots of ailments, which my patients are discovering. We're gradually promoting this practice. With over 5,000 years of history, TCM is not only your cultural heritage and a way to maintain harmony within your body, but also a method to save lives. I want members of the public to understand that Chinese medicine can cure sickness. It's not only for prevention. Once a doctor understands the background and needs of a patient, the method for treatment is vastly different from Western medicine. Previously in a car accident, Mr. Xiao suffered from a cerebral hemorrhage that left him visually impaired. My skull cracked and my face, right hand and leg were in bad shape. However, after receiving TCM treatment, Mr. Xiao's condition has improved greatly. Now he can even drive from Taidong to Guanshan. Treatment in Chinese medicine can support and sometimes even strengthen that offered by Western medicine. The interference level is surprisingly low. One patient taking full advantage of a blend of TCM and Western medicine is 81-year-old senior Yang, who suffered from cardiovascular disease and an ovarian tumor. Before and after her surgery and chemo treatments, Senior Yang received acupuncture to aid in her recovery. Look at how great the benefits of acupuncture are. If I had not received these treatments, then I would not be able to recover as quickly as I had. What is the purpose of Chinese medicine? Let me tell you, it is to open up your blood and energy channels. Not only treating patients inside the hospital, Dr. Shen also leads a team of young doctors into the community to hold seminars about healthy lifestyles. I want to remind everyone that when a body part hurts, it's because something is clogged. 
If blood and energy are flowing freely, then you won't hurt. If you just pop a pill to make the pain go away, that is not good. Unlike Western medicine, traditional Chinese medicine uses energy channels and diet to find the root of the problem. The foods she talked about not eating, I didn't know that, so I think I will try not to eat them from now on. By acupressure points and gentle movements, one finds pills are not necessary to stay pain-free. Chinese medicine combined with Western medicine is bringing the best of both worlds to patients in Taidong's Guanshan. Taiwan is highly susceptible to natural disaster due to its geographic location and climatic conditions. To promptly respond to such disasters, 10 years ago the government set up the National Science and Technology Center for Disaster Reduction, which monitor and mitigate the impact of natural disasters. Typhoon Haiyan's wind speed per hour was over 250 kilometers. That's even faster than the high-speed rail. The wind speed of Typhoon Haiyan reached unprecedented levels before the typhoon touched down in the Philippines. Even Taiwan could feel its power. Typhoon Haiyan induced rock waves in Taiwan. According to a computer simulation, the west coast of Taiwan would experience massive waves if a typhoon with a similar power struck the island. If Typhoon Haiyan had changed its route and hit Taiwan, it would have caused flooding 10 to 15 kilometers inland. To prevent future disasters, staff of the National Science and Technology Center for Disaster Reduction went to survey the disaster areas in the Philippines and simulated scenarios of all sorts of natural disasters with the computer technology. If torrential rainfall increases, the central mountain regions will experience more landslides. This is Joe Fenner Mountain, the epicenter of the 91 earthquake in 1999. The landslides of Jiufeng'e Mountain caused two large barrier lakes here. As both of them were not naturally formed, there is a higher chance of overflow when a typhoon or heavy rain hits. Thus, they set up this device to monitor the water level. The slope of the mountain is closely monitored as well. Three CCTVs are recording 24-7 and transmit live footages back to the center. With these devices, we don't have to send staff to check on a regular basis. With 4,000 cameras across the island, staff can monitor any disaster and quickly respond to it. Taiwan's geological composition has undergone a profound change. Over the next 300 to 350 years, the chance of mass lights will only increase. In the wake of increasing natural disasters, the Taiwanese government set up the National Science and Technology Center for Disaster Reduction some 10 years ago. experience countless natural disasters, we are starting to respect the power of Mother Nature. Human beings can do nothing but follow the course of nature. We need to learn how to prevent disasters and reduce them. The Taiwanese government and NGOs have now refocused their work on disaster prevention and mitigation. In 2013 alone, natural disasters left 13 people dead and 182 injured. Despite the increasing number of natural disasters, the casualty rate has decreased. Before in Taiwan, on average, a typhoon could cause 200 deaths. Now with our instant and preventative evacuation mechanisms, the number of casualties has been greatly reduced to single digits or even zero. Taiwan's disaster preparation in 2013 was recognized by overseas insurance companies. That means Taiwan's capabilities in both disaster prevention and disaster resilience have improved. However, other than using advanced technology to mitigate the impact of environmental disasters, we should also learn to be humble before Mother Nature 
and find a way to live in harmony with the elements. The initiative to watch Master Zheng Yin's Wisdom Outdown broadcast has inspired many volunteers and residents worldwide to change for the better. In Malacca, Malaysia, one such person is Zheng Weilun, who used to live a completely different lifestyle. Here's more. I heard the Master say that nothing is too difficult if you are determined to change. Just like that, I vow to turn my life around. Ever since coming across Master Zheng Yin's teaching, Zheng Wei Lun now wakes up each morning to watch the Master's Wisdom at Dawn program. It's difficult to imagine that Zheng once lived a completely different lifestyle. Before at night, if the phone rang, I would be worried. I was afraid something had happened to my son. When I wanted to change, my friends would say, don't even think about it. Let's just enjoy ourselves, and I will blindly follow them. Following a series of health problems with his neck and seeing his left hand atrophying, Zen made up his mind to turn over a new leaf. While trying to recover his health, the young man joined his parents in the morning study group. I'm really glad to have come across Ji because if it wasn't for the organization, my son would have continued down the wrong path in life. When you have the Dharma in your heart, your direction in life will be clear. For me, it is obvious that I have to walk this Bodhisattva path. Apart from joining the initiative to watch Master Zheng Yin's teachings, Zheng Wei Lun is now also attending volunteer training seminars to strengthen his commitment to Ji. Moving to Taiwan, in Tainan Shanghua District, the local government held a low-carbon event to coincide with the strawberry season. Invited, of course, Red City volunteers, who quickly got to work setting up a booth from which they spread their message of environmental protection and vegetarianism. <laughs> On stage are several teachings who are using this weekend to promote vegetarianism in their own fun way. Vegetarianism can help slow down aging and prevent many sicknesses. It also makes your body less acidic and thus you will live longer. Volunteers explain to passers-by both young and old which items can be recycled. The volunteers also point out that saving the planet means reducing our use of non-renewable resources. We should always bring our reusable chopsticks with us. We should not buy PET bottles. At home, when washing our hands, we can try to use less water. We should not waste energy when not using something, we should unplug it. Reducing our use of the planet's resources and living a low-carbon lifestyle will help ensure that our children will inherit an earth as beautiful as the one we enjoy today. In Taiwan, the annual Tzu Global Entrepreneur Seminar successfully concluded on March 16th. Thanks to the seminar, 800 entrepreneurs went home with a better understanding of the Buddhist NGO and promised to spread the organization's environmental concepts to those around them. The first inspiration I received from Mr. Zhen Yan was that I need to learn through doing and awaken through learning. Sharing his experience after walking the Tzuji path with entrepreneurs from around the globe is Tzuji Foundation spokesperson He Zhisheng, who had more than 20 years of experience in the media field. Brother He shared with us his experience in the media field and how Dai TV can bring positive influences to society. He told us that through watching Dai TV, all of us can absorb and take Master Dunyan's Dharma to heart. These programs will inspire more people to walk the city path. Other than gaining a better understanding of Dai TV, through the three-day seminar, trainee Hu Zhijian from Malaysia has put to rest the doubts he had of the Buddhist NGO. I realize that the money Tsuji receives from kind-hearted people and those that are used by the masters at the Jinsa board are not the same. Every penny we donate to the organization will be put towards helping the needy. The seminar has solved my doubts about the organization. As an entrepreneur, we tend to face many problems in life or at work. If all of us can be more compassionate, we can spread the seeds of compassion far and wide. This will not only help us deal with obstacles, but also guide us on the right path. 
Inspired by Tzu's environmental messages, Li Yiping, who is an employee of Panza Express, a fast food Chinese restaurant chain, promised to promote recycling at her work. We hardly sort our garbage in the United States, especially in stores. We need to think of ways to help Panda Express become a restaurant that produces zero waste. Thanks to a three-day seminar, entrepreneurs were inspired to work together to make a difference in the world and spread their seeds of compassion far and wide. In Taiwan's dental entrepreneur Liao Wanju's success in life came from years of chasing sales numbers. However, he sought the air of his way after attending a seminar in Hualien and saw how things about drama master make ends meet on so little. Liao was then inspired to make a change in his life and encouraged those around him to walk the city path. Entrepreneur Liao Wanju surveys his manufacturing plant as a part of his daily routine. A manufacturer of plastic stationery, Liao thought consuming alcohol was a way to increase his sales and never presented his employees with a friendly face. It was only when he attended an entrepreneur seminar in Hualien five years ago that he saw the error of his ways. <laughs> Seeing how the Dharma masters make ends meet has changed my perspective on life. I shouldn't raise my voice to my employees. I should talk to them instead. This way they will listen much better. Previous stern demeanor now gone, Liao's interaction with his employees are now much friendlier. He's very nice to his employees and will think about details on our behalf. Setting an example for others to follow, Liao invites his employees to practice recycling by placing recycling receptacles on each floor and also invites them to donate money to help the less fortunate. I'm just doing my part to help the disadvantaged. His life at home also took a dramatic change. Meals are now vegetarian and his lifestyle simplified. Eating simple is eating healthy. The master says we only have one mouth. The simpler the food, the healthier it is. The couple now fully devotes themselves to being city volunteers. The garden behind their house was also turned into a recycling point, where neighbors actualize environmental protection. <laughs> we have been inspired by them and sought recyclables along with them. In appreciating, cherishing and cultivating their blessings, Mr. and Mrs. Liao actualized Tsuji's humanitarian spirit in their local community and create a more meaningful life for themselves and those around them. We stay in Taiwan at the end of the show. The two volunteers and team of doctors arrived at the Puding Division of the Xingzhu Fire Brigade and provided firefighters with blood pressure measurements. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching the headlines. Goodbye.